cod covers the world. One of the reasons they are found in fish so often is because of their relative abundance. They cover the western and eastern portions of the Atlantic. Cod has been found as far south as Australia too. Since cod is spread so far, the common belief is that they are probably one of the more populous fish. Combine that with the fact that they lay 2 to 11 million eggs per one female, and they should be. However, only a few of these eggs survive, and overfishing cod has drastically reduced their numbers. It has also reduced the number of older cod. Older cod are important because they lay more eggs. Three years is considered to be maturity for cod, and of the catches of racing years, the cod's ages have been primarily one and two, with ages of three and older being less common. Besides overfishing, pollution is a factor in the decreasing population. Not just chemical pollution either. Leftover nets and discarded fishing gear is a problem too. Fish get caught in the nets and are dragged down to their death. The nets then float back up to repeat their deadly cycle. The Northern Atlantic cod is a staple in Canadian, American, and Western European diets. While not as nutrient dense as salmon, it is a popular low fat alternative to trout, salmon, and catfish at less than a quarter of the total saturated fat per gram. Cod was the main course almost every day for the Vikings, a civilization spanning most of Northern Europe. In addition, it is a namesake for Cape Cod and is served at Culver's and sometimes in Truman dining halls. From Viking times to modern day, cod has always been an important dish. But unlike more abundant meat sources like chicken and cattle, the cod's population limits its availability as a food source. In the mid 20th century, overfishing, disease, and pollution have devastated the North Atlantic commodity. Since then, they've never abounded. The reduction in population density reduced mating rates and in 2009 the cod market hit an all-time low before recovering slightly due to laws implemented 12 years before. As a result, the price of this food source has gone up, to the point that many more people can't afford to eat cod. Additionally, due to the demand this puts on other popular types of fish, the dramatic reduction in the cod population is inflating the fish market. We believe that this food source can recover and the key lies in how cod is affected in their fishery environment. Fisheries are essentially farms where fish originating from the ocean or lakes can breed and be harvested from man-made tanks with a controlled environment. What can fisheries do? Fisheries can do any number of things. To start, they can employ better caging techniques so as to prevent the fish from escaping into the ocean and polluting the local population. They need to keep track of fish health and separate fish depending on their health status. This will prevent the fish from dying so much, leading to a better population. Fishing companies could use more biodegradable gear so that if some netting or other equipment falls into the water, the fish have a better chance of survival. They could keep track of the age of certain fishing spot populations and status of a fish population so as to prevent overfishing and to give used areas time to recover, ensuring that younger fish have time to mature, lay eggs, and spawn. Currently, fishery management and independent entrepreneurs have been innovating on the best and most cost-effective ways to cover these bases. For example, it was found that in certain fishery sites, the fish tanks could be placed at depths with better current, optimally 300 meters deep, which aids in filtering the water for disease. Diseases can kill off large populations of cod, and they can linger among cod populations if there isn't enough of a current, according to Thor Magne Jonasson who supervises a fishery in Norway, Baden Oe. Fish disease can cause scales to rot away, boils, and other nasty symptoms that can cause death if not treated. Additionally, fisheries are stocking up on ways to take care of cod, including installing sand filters, biofilters, and UV sterilizers. Until then, there are temporary yet helpful solutions that can be made outside of fisheries. The Fisheries and Aquaculture Department of the United Nations has had legislation implemented regarding fishing and hatcheries, but they have yet to ratify a cod size lower boundary that would help the cod population recover. Meanwhile, fishing companies and fishing tool producers could protect their trade by producing and using eco-friendly tools, such as biodegradable nets to avoid polluting fishing spots. Net companies could make nets with bigger mesh to allow maturing cod to escape. As we wait for the cod population to recover, we, the average people, can help by being aware of our impact on the pollution of the Atlantic Ocean and the pressure of the fishing industry to overfish. Fish is an excellent food. It's important to recognize where it came from and conserve it.